Hi family, this is Nitos. I'd like to share with you a devotion from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 to 10. On Valentine's Day, I make sure I have a bouquet of roses for my love. And I choose the rose because to me it's one of the most beautiful flowers. And I thought someone who is so beautiful deserves a beautiful rose. Of course, that's my love. Know that I try my best to arrange them and put them in a vase. As I do, this you'll hear me say, ouch, ouch. Them thorns prick and they hurt. I thought the rose would have been perfect without the thorns. What do you think? The rose would have been perfect without the thorns? The Bible tells us of a man who suffers from a thorn, Paul, which he calls a thorn in the flesh. Of all people, Paul, isn't he known as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, of the apostles? His missionary work was most extensive beyond compare. Throw into his powerful doctrinal contributions to the church. 13 of the 27 books of the New Testament are attributed to his writing. More, in our passage, he claims to be a most privileged keeper of God's secrets. Anyone's head could swell with such incredible achievements and privileges. St. Paul was on a, or on the precipice of such a temptation. He could have been on the verge of falling with all these pulling him down. But here's what he wrote, verse 7 of our text. To keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh a messenger of Satan to torment me. A messenger of Satan? Huh? Right? God allowed Satan to bring suffering to, devoted, to a devoted servant of his? Of all people, Paul? Some Christians may say, no way. God doesn't do that. Well, hello. Have we forgotten about Job? God allowed Satan because God was confident in his man. To the old one, God said, have at him. To Paul was given then what he calls a thorn in my flesh. A metaphor, a personal struggle, an affliction, a challenge faced, an annoyingly painful one. What could the thorn be? No, no, no. Guys, no. It's not his wife. Sorry, Paul didn't have one. What could it be, God's people? Some theologians say it could be a physical ailment, a stomach-related disease that caused him severe pain. Some say it's malaria that he acquired from his many travels. Some say it's an eye problem. Rocks might have hit his eyes when he was stoned in Lystra. Or it might have been epilepsy, the more popular belief. Some theologians propose that it could also be this thorn in the flesh, a spiritual struggle or a temptation that Paul battled. So many possible explanations. You and I could speculate as much as we want, but we will never know except God. You know why? Well, I think God wants us to focus on your own, on my own thorn in the flesh. The original Greek word used for the word thorn is scallops, a splinter. Yet it could also mean a stake. S-T-A-K-E, a large pointed object, a wooden stake. Imagine then the suffering wrought by a sharp object piercing your side. It's so painful so that like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, Paul prayed three times. What pains you, my brother, my sister? Know that you are not alone in this. I join you here. The United Community joins you in your thorn bearing. We need to be together here. This thorn could either pull us away from God, backslide even, or it could draw you so much closer to Jesus, whose side was pierced too. Like Paul, may this thorn balance our life, keeping us on level ground, allowing us to step into each new morning of a life boasting that in our weakness we are strong. My wife Apple and I love watching Korean telenovelas. Here's what Koreans do to encourage someone, and I like it. They say, fighting, like this, fighting. Can you do that? Fighting. You see, to fight 
is to enjoy the everyday new life that Jesus wants us, wants you to have. And we can, you can, with a sure trust and confidence that His power is made perfect in our vulnerabilities, that His grace is more than enough. My friends, a new creation such as you is one that God so love and so desire to become flawless, even with all our flaws. What we see as imperfections could be that which God will use to perfect us. God could and would when we let our thorn in the flesh compel us to completely depend on Him. Such is the beautiful irony of the life of a Christian, of a worker in His vineyard. We are made perfect like a rose with its thorns, made whole and complete, lacking in nothing, beautiful, new, in the sufficient grace of Christ. Amen.